I would say Clive Carter is the most successful music exec that nobody knows. <laughs> and even when you say, when people talk about him and you in the inner circle and people would say, oh, Clive this, Clive that, and you're talking about Jive and people know, other people who don't know are listening thinking you're talking about Clive Davis. And they're like, yeah, I know, I know, but they don't really know. This, this guy kind of, he took fucking rap music and became a fucking billionaire of Jive Records. And, and when you look back on the groups he's, he signed, which you gotta give a lot of credit to the president of the label all those years, Barry Wise. But Barry Wise and Clive, I think Clive more or less was into the, all that ownership shit and kind of like, you know, publishing, Zamba publishing and all that stuff. And he not, didn't just want the record sales, he wanted to own the music, which is why he got the wealth. But I mean, think of the groups they had. They had in the early days before I got there, it was like fucking Billy Ocean and Kumo D, Houdini, you know what I mean? Kumo D and Houdini, that was fucking, that was the, you know, outside of Def Jam, that was the biggest shit. I remember one year Jive had um, had a showcase at one of those music conventions. And that year, Jive was probably, they, they outdid, they really outdid Def Jam on sales and getting money that year, but it was, it was too short. Will Smith might've still been there. Might've been Fresh Prince still there, maybe. But it was definitely, um, it was uh, Mystical. It was UGK, it was Tribe Called Quest. Yeah, Kara was one, I mean, it was, it was some shit on that, on that roster. Jive built a really, you know, big hip hop thing. And then one day they slipped in on a, the Backstreet Boys and Britney Spears and NSYNC and they said, fuck hip hop. <laughs> when they got that, that little trio there, they just shitted on the hip hop and R&B and was like, we're in a new business. and. You might know of stories like Jive acquiring Arista's roster and these groups coming over and fucking careers just dying because Jive was getting so much money off of, off of Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears and, and Backstreet Boys and NSYNC when they was together. It was just, they turned my man Clive Carter into a billionaire. The billionaire nobody knows about, <laughs> shit. But it was, you know, I treasure the, the years when it was a hip hop label and you know, you go through up to Jive's offices and the, and the people that worked there were fans of the people that were signed to the label. It was a good vibe. It was a good vibe, vibe before they went super corporate. These motherfuckers just looking at me, going all over there like, what the fuck is this nigga doing? And I'm way in the back, on the floor, bust my ass and everything and shit. Got back there and threw a bleh. The driver went and got in one of the bunks. He ain't even stay there and hold it. He he ran to the back. He like, yo, I like it, but it sounds like you talking about something else. It's like talk about the shit we've been through, everything that we shared. So I'm like, oh, you want one of those rhymes? And we pitched a TV show with Kanye West called Alligator Boots, and the Comedy Channel was interested, and they put up a million dollars for us to do a pilot.